great. This works much better. At least for now. And done. I did the thing. Okay, everyone should be able to see this. Hopefully, yes. Awesome. Yep. Cool. All right, give me a moment. We're going to give folks a few a minute or two to join. Apologies for the delay. We had okay. Zoom issues. Did the music stop? There shouldn't be any music. There should be no music. Since it's going to take like five of us to replace Amy, uh, what tasks do you want to assign to me for these? You know, since I'm kind of available. <laughs> uh, that's a really good question. Because so on this one, you're going to actually open up the votes. You and I are going to talk about like how, like after this meeting, we are going to do like the the votes for like over in in Sandbox. So, um, got gotcha. you. With that. Okay. I'm cool. going to drop camera in. Good to see you, Freddie. Hooray! All right, everyone. Hello. Today is. April 9th, uh, it's our sandbox meeting. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to apologize because I have lost the ability to see chat. So as I discover it, I will follow along. If someone could help moderate for me, that would be great. So let's talk about Kairos. Um, is there a TOC member who has looked at this project and would like to start our discussion on it? Yes, no. Okay. But from the tag runtime perspective, we, we looked at it. I think uh, maybe if you can scroll down, I think we already said that it was okay to yep. apply for a sandbox. Okay. Do we have any other questions around Kairos? Um, so I think one of the comments on why we have this earlier, uh, I think one of the comments is that it's on hold for DOC discussions or distributions more generally, but Flatcar is already in the new divisions process, and I think we've agreed that we're kind of okay with it. Uh, so I really don't see why not. Iris. Okay. So are we good to move Kairos to a vote then? That's good with tag runtime. Uh, this is uh, a project that allows you to create distribution. So there's some tooling, tooling around that. So not necessarily mm -hmm. the same as flat car. It's similar, right? but not necessarily the same, but Yep. I think I'm I'm definitely in favor to go for a vote for sandbox for carers. Um, I think this might be a good uh, opportunity for us to clarify GOC position on operating systems and distributions. And I think sandbox is going to be a good position for us to observe how it's doing and what is the community feedback on it as well. Yep. Agreed. Others, other stems. Yeah, plus one from me. Um, I, I think one of the things that we were looking for this one was licensing issues of some sort, but uh, looks like they are clean. Uh, they are able to generate from many different existing operating systems. So uh, from that point of view, um, you know, they are a layer above the operating system itself. So from uh, so I think, yeah, we should give them a shot. Uh, All right. Let's move uh, Kairos to a vote, Amy and George. Sound good? Awesome. All right, Connect. Uh, anyone want to start our conversation on Connect? This uh, project is returning, I think, because we, we've had a lot of discussion on them already. 
In the last review, uh, we had asked them to talk to Tag Network and straighten out the issue of whether we want RPC projects within um, the CNCF. And um, so Lynn, I think, did you talk to them? Um, anyway, from the notes, it says that Tag Network was happy to um, accept them into Tag Network as a sandbox project. Yeah, I'm looking through. Uh, it sounds like, well, this is uh, Nick Jackson uh, commented on it. So we do have a recommendation from Tag Network then. Same thing. Yep. Okay. Um, so we've talked about this project in the past, and I think the TOC had some, uh, we've already had some conversations around precedence for technology. And um, so I think this, I think that we're all in alignment that this one can probably just move to a vote at this point, other TOC members. All right, cool. I think there is a discussion to be had with projects that are related to our technology, well, to similar technologies within the ecosystem, but them choosing to have their own projects. So this is definitely, they have, they have some association with GRPC and might be within the same sub ecosystem, I'd say. Um, and I think this is going to be the case for our next project, which is going to be Cubane, which they decided to, instead of actually going with Cubespray, they decided to have their kind of own product. And yeah. And, and definitely this is addressed in both PRs. Uh, I think the general thread here is that it is easier for community members to create their own kind of mini product or version of a product um, because it seems to be quite difficult to integrate with existing projects in their community and roadmap as well. So I think there's like perhaps a higher, or like a deeper conversation we need to have of what we can do with these projects. They can definitely associate or join a different project which already exists within the ecosystem rather than create their own mini version of it. Yeah, so let's, I agree that that conversation needs to happen. Um, let's, so connect, we'll move to a vote. Let's talk about QBM because this is really where that conversation uh, started. So QBM was a project that we previously looked at um, and we asked the project to um, have a conversation with Cube Spray because it seemed very related. We thought it could be within scope. Um, they have since provided us with some additional information, I think it's this one, yeah, this comment um, that provides a little bit more of like a comparison and a contrast within the ecosystem against um, projects like Strimzy and CubeSpray, how QBN and CubeSpray are related, but with separate focuses and separate um, functionality, but one does complement the other. They do um, work together um, with some... Uh, I'm trying to remember, where is it? Uh, with some differences between the two of them. So for this one, I think the project has made a reasonable case as to why they should not be included within Cube Spray. And I think that makes sense. Other TOC members, what do you think? And, and tag leads and chairs, what is your perspective? Dims? Yeah, uh, I think it is good to have them separate uh, as, as long as they are working together uh, for sure. Uh, I think there was some conversation around like, can you replace Cube Spray with something else as well and give an option to the folks. I think um, they they were fine with it, I guess, uh, with going that route as well. Um, so overall, I think uh, within the uh, Kate Sig's, uh, it might not fit, um, so it's better to have it here in the sandbox for sure. Okay, Katie and then Aaron. My additional comment here is that considering how engaged they are <laughs> throughout this application process, I'm very much in favor of having them as a sandbox project because they definitely seem to be having a very clear vision for the project and a very clear differenti differentiation between Cube, Cube EN, I don't know how to say that correctly, and Cube Spray as well. So this engagement definitely puts kind of confidence and faith at least in me and in this project as well and move it for a vote. Yeah, just one more uh, tidbit there is, uh, this is from the Dow Cloud folks and uh, you know they have been 
showing up in the uh, Kubernetes community a lot. Uh, there were at least 10 to 12 of them uh, in Paris. Um, so, you know, from that point of view of engagement, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we should definitely uh, give them a ch chance. Okay, Aaron? I, I don't really think have any additive. The only thing I was going to say is the separation is good because there are projects that we've unnecessarily grouped together in the past uh, just based on usage. And then that becomes a detriment to them graduating. Spiffy Spire is probably the best example I can think of historically. So plus one to, to that piece and plus one to their effort in, in seeing this through. I think it shows a healthy project. Yep. Ricardo? Yeah, I just, uh, just wanted to add, because this was a sign to me, they replied really quickly to all the questions we asked and they were pretty clear about it, so plus one. Yep, all right. Uh, kudos, Cubian, for being responsive and providing the additional detail that we wanted. Aaron, your hand is up again. We're still? No, I just didn't lower it, so apologies <laughs> for that now. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna move Cubian to a vote. Awesome. Coordinator, anyone take a look at this one, have comments, insights? Let me so, scroll down. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, unless, unless the title is wanting to take over, I'm happy to say my comments after. Ricardo? Yeah, I think um, they, uh, went back and talked to these groups and there's a comment at the bottom that they say that they're okay with uh, uh, the, yeah coordinators should be in sandbox because we, we asked them to talk to WD, WG batch so. okay other Ricardo yeah I was just gonna say the same like the, the project is actually quite active uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's important that they stay in touch with the different groups in Kubernetes, not only Batch, but also the upcoming Serving and Accelerator working groups. Um, okay. But I think they fit here, yeah. Uh, they've been informed on the expectations for staying involved in those bodies, is that correct? Yeah, they. I think they even joined already uh, the Batch working group uh, okay. for the session and they discussed it there. So they're all aware of each other. Okay. Um, and one thing I forgot to check is uh, who are the folks uh, from which company or companies? Do you know? Alibaba Cloud. Okay. Thank you. It's from uh, yeah, Alibaba Cloud. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other discussion concerns on this project, Katie? So my question was um, since it seems to be a scheduling. Um, specific tooling, uh, what were their discussion or conversation kind of outlines with SIG scheduling? Um, is there any perhaps consideration to join them or collaborate with them as well? I, th I think that was the point, Katie. They, they were put in touch with the batch working group of SIG scheduling. Uh, and I they, see. They kind of... Oh, okay, so it's, it's Andrew. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Yeah, yeah they were three people from the Kubernetes SIGs uh, that responded on that uh, thread. So we are good. All right. Are we okay to move this one to a vote if there's no further discussion? Sounds good. Awesome. Cube Slice. Multi-cluster networking for pod-to-pod -pod communication across clusters. Anybody want to start the conversation while I look for notes and synapses? Looks like Tag Network had some recommendations. Hey, um, I apologize. Did, did you want some, um, I can give some input on group slides. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether I, I was allowed to give any comments or whether it was just listening you, in. You are welcome to provide us your insights and observations. Oh, I apologize. Um, yeah, so so with Coop Slice, um, I've had quite a good look at the project. We've done some demos with it. Um, I think that the project looks really solid. I think it's solving a great problem around sort of multi-cluster, um, specifically sort of multi-cluster cross-cloud or hybrid cloud. 
uh, which which is is a great benefit to uh, the Kubernetes ecosystem. It also seems to be pretty solidly put together from a technical perspective, um, also from a security perspective. They've they've got some good stuff going on there, and they seem to be pretty engaged with us as well to to want to kind of drive it forward and build community and, and make it a a community project. So our recommendation is we we'd love to see it sandbox and um, yeah we we we'd be happy to help help them with whatever they need. Yeah. Some addi additional color from me. Um, at least one of the founders or uh, you know the startup uh, exec uh, folks. They are in Massachusetts, so I did get a chance to talk to them maybe a year and a half to two years ago and kept in touch with them uh, over a couple of KubeCons. Uh, so, you know, they have a business for sure, uh, but they want to do this the right way. And, uh, you know, they were talking all the right things. And, uh, you know, some of our folks ended up in uh, the company's name is Avesha. Uh, so, uh, so all good stuff from me. <laughs> I, I'm hearing nice things from them for sure. Okay. Ricardo, Ricardo? Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Dofe. I can go after him. I was saying, it looks like there's a, com a comment from Josh as well saying that the community files look fine. Yeah, yeah the, the only comment I had is that at, uh, I think in one of the comments, Lynn uh, raised a concern about uh, the lack of GitHub activity, but actually looking a bit deeper, they have several repos and uh, the um, the operator repo seems to be pretty active, and uh, there was a gap on the releases in the last six months of last year, but actually this year they picked it up and it's been pretty active. Yeah, they said they skipped one of the releases because they were they had a major feature change, I think is what the comment was. Katie? Again, I just want to give kudos for very good um, engagement from the, the maintainers. Um, I think a similar question to coordinator, is there any perhaps chances or opportunities for them to collaborate with SIG multi-cluster as well. I know it's focused on the networking component, but might be a good collaboration to have with that group as well. I believe they are doing that already, uh, Katie. I think they are showing up in the um, different Kubernetes SIGs, um, though not in like SIG networking for sure, but the other ones um, that you were talking about. Okay. That's awesome. Kathy? Yeah, um, can you hear me? I just yep. tried. Okay. Yeah, I, I have went through this project. I've gone through this project. Um, it, I think it's a useful feature. Yeah, it set up multiple virtual network domains for different tenants and different yeah workloads. So the, the slice mechanism, I think it's uh, very useful. Okay. Nick? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to add about the the releases, um, I did give them a recommendation that even if they don't have a major feature release, they, they should try to create uh, and cut regular security patch releases. And, and they did say that they were going to start implementing that that as a as kind of a um, like a weekly release or something, which which will just kind of help things whilst they're working on big features. Yeah, and those will eventually be requirements for them to move to incubation. So they they've got a little bit of time, but definitely worthwhile to give them a heads up on that now. Okay, thank you. Um, to UC members, are do we have enough information to move this project to a vote for inclusion? Yes? Yes. Awesome, all right. Next up is Star Rocks. Anybody wanna start the conversation on this one? This one, I think we're probably gonna end up deferring because it looks like there are some open questions around licensing and it's already a Linux Foundation thing, but the trade, but the, but the owning company doesn't appear to be in there or something. So what we can do is we can defer this to CNCF staff to let us know if there's anything um, potentially problematic with this before we spend a significant amount of time reviewing the project. How does that sound for TUC members? And also, uh, I took a look at actually the, the project the itself is active, but the roadmap is out of date. Also, uh, no presentation to the tech storage yet. Uh, but technically, I think it's uh, might be a good addition to the ecosystem because it's uh, 
It's a, a database project. Okay, so back in Amy, because I'm I'm not sure exactly what we're supposed to do here. Like, I believe that the roadmap thing we should update, but like, I'm it's unclear what the request is. So, for us. I think based off of the conversation that's been going on just on the issue regarding the licensing is just clarity that there aren't any license issues or conflicts associated with the project. It's already a Linux Foundation project. There is a reference to a company. Um, it's unclear how that is this just older documentation that needs to be cleaned up or is there something else that needs to be closed out before we should start looking at incorporating this project? Licensing stuff set aside, is there any technical reason or information that we are missing that would cause us to defer this? Because what I, what I would like to be able to do is start moving the licensing questions and concerns over to CNCF staff to do as part of the onboarding into CNCF, because that's the current process that we have. We can certainly call things out and make them aware and say, hey, this looks weird. Um, but if that is the only reason for deferring a project, I would prefer that the TOC come to the technical recommendation um, for inclusion or exclusion not necessarily contingent upon the licensing because that's a whole other workflow. Second reason is that they don't, it doesn't yet to appear to have been a presentation around it. Okay. To any tag. So we don't have that as a requirement for Sandbox yet. Okay. We do ask for it because it does help us in determining whether or not a project is a good fit, is aligned with our principles, aligned with the expectations and best practices of a project in that given domain area. Um, it certainly helps. And we have been returning projects back to tags as a result of that. Okay. So I, I had one quick question, which was on the blog post they had when they joined the Linux Foundation, there was something about um, talking about moving either to LFAI and data or the CNCF and saying that probably they would fit better in the CNCF, but maybe expand a bit on the cloud native part, because clearly the operator uh, is part of the cloud native area, but uh, maybe write a little bit more about. Uh... Yeah. So there was, so um Josh asked this question and they had come back and asked for the definition of cloud native, which we provided, but it seems like the only portion of it is the support for Kates and containers yeah. through that operator. Jeefy. If you're talking, we cannot hear you. Double mute. It's awesome. So licensing things. Mm hmm if the TOC votes on a project and there may or may not be licensing issues and the TOC approves for the project to be, you know, moved on, part of the CNCF, is the TOC okay if CNCF staff then immediately go, nope, we're not allowing this in because there's too many, the, the licenses are too hot? Like, are you okay with CNCF staff vetoing a TOC vote? So... I, so I'm going to push back on the language there. It's not necessarily that the staff are vetoing it. It's more that the Linux Foundation and CNCF have made a determination that the licenses presented associated with the project are in conflict with the foundation's charter for acceptance. Functionally the same thing. Yes. The I'm outcome say, is the same. I'd say that that's probably not uh, going to play well also, in the public forum. I'm like, my concern is by shifting things off the TOC and onto CNCF staff, don't get me wrong, we can do that. It's going to be accomplishing the same thing. It's just the perception will be different and the perception might be somewhat negative. Right. Which is why, like, this is why I wanted to ask the question is because in the past, there is an expectation that projects that are in the foundation have already gone through a licensing review and a license exception process and that the governing board and the license committee have already done all of the research that needs to go along with it. And the TOC is providing the decision that it should be included provided those things are resolved. When projects already exist, we don't move to a vote on the project to move levels until that licensing check has already occurred in the governing board 
governing board has given their sign off on it. We have not run into a situation where the governing board has said no for a project that already exists in the foundation. So while the TOC might say that this is a great idea and we should include it, ultimately, if there is a licensing conflict, um, that's not for us to override. Dems and then Kevin. Uh, so I, I have a feeling that if we should do the thing beforehand, a license check and copyright check uh, kind of thing, like if it, we'll put them in another bucket and let the CNCF staff come back to us before we look at it deeper. Uh, but just from the comments there about um, CNCF, uh, sorry, cloud native definition, I, you know, I don't think we should be uh, entertaining them at this point, but uh, I don't know if we want to make the decision now or differ for coming back with additional information. So let me go to Kevin and then I'll come back to that part. Kevin. Yeah, I, I just want to check because in, in the process like TOC voting is the last step. Once we uh, vote and get passed, uh, it's like we, uh, the 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 CNCF staff is going to you know share the result to everyone, so we really need to check the uh, license thing before we go into a view, vote. Another thing is that whether we should kind of point out all the relevant uh, questions, for example, uh, checking license thing as well as asking for you know deeper connection with uh, connection with the cloud native or. Uh, we go back after the license check pass. This is where we need to double check, I think. Okay. All right. So let me recap. TOC would like to have CNCF perform a cursory licensing review of all sandbox applications before they are placed in the upcoming queue for the TOC to review and make a decision or move to a vote on. Is that correct? Emily, I, I don't even want to say that uh, in the sense that uh, it's okay for us to go through this process and see something and like flag them for the uh, for the CNCF staff to look at. Okay, Aaron, but wouldn't it be nice if that was automated Dems and it doesn't even come into our queue if it has that? I'm just thinking in terms of hmm. our ability to scale. Like if there are checks that can be done prior to it hitting the pipeline here. Right. I. It I, I it, I think of it the same way we think about like, uh, hey, we should send it to the tag, right? Um, okay, Katie? That, that was precisely my comment. I think we should engage the um, the legal committee in the same way we engage with the tags. And if we think that requires an extra review from them, then we just engage them. Um, at the same time, we cannot uh, expect for them to do this for every single project applying for Sandbox, but I think at least engaging them on this case-by-case -case basis will help us. Okay. So I'm hearing if in the course of our review, we find a potential licensing question associated with a project that we are going to request, we are going to defer the project from review. We're going to request staff take a look at it. All right. Duffy? I think that would be a fine step forward. However, okay. I do think I do think that it is absolutely possible for legal to have some automation that describes like low hanging fruit that they could actually that they could speak to that would be useful in every review. All right. I think we've talked about the licensing portion on this one a lot. Nikita and I will take an action to have the conversation with staff to make sure that we're all on the same page for how this should work. Um, so setting aside the licensing portion for Star Rocks. There is an open question on how the project aligns with the definition of cloud native and whether or not it actually constitutes a cloud native project um, by our definition. Note the TOC definition on the repo still needs to be updated from the governing board approved definition. That being said, given all of this, and it seems to be that the only cloud native specific ad that this has is its relation to Kubernetes and containers through the Kate's operator. Is this sufficient for us to consider inclusion or exclusion in the CNCF? And do we have any other questions for the project that would prevent us from making a decision to move it to a vote? 
do we have any other projects that were operators and we accepted them within Sandbox? Because for me, here, I, I would say it really depends on the end user engagement and if they would, I mean, it, it seems like a product which one of the installation options is for a case operator and management process can be on a Kubernetes cluster. So for me, being a case operator sometimes is not sufficient, um, but this is where it's very blurred. Like if, if we had any other projects within the same kind of, yeah. the I same kind of- we said no to operators yeah. themselves. The framework is part of the CNCF, but not the operators themselves. That, that's that been our standard in the past. It's also the discussion we had around like plugins for VS Code. I think we ended up on the same uh, kind of trajectory for standardizing a yes or no, but I mean, we can always revisit that if people feel like they need to be included. Correct. And to... Ricardo's point in chat, Stremzy is an operator. Now that's um, that was accepted into the CNCF, not with this TOC, but with the prior one. So there is some precedence for including it, um, but that was also, and I don't remember the time frame associated with it. That was also at a time where we were much earlier on in the CNCF than we currently are today. Um, this particular project, Starrux, is more than just the Kate's operator. The Kate's operator though is the only connection it seems to be um, into the cloud native ecosystem. It is still a database, an analytics database. Dims. Duffy, I know oh. your hand is up, but I'm not sure if you have a follow. -up. Okay. Dims. Okay. Uh so we they still haven't talked to tag storage. So we should put them in that bucket and revisit. Okay. Do I have a TOC member that's going to volunteer to summarize what we expect the project to do um, before we can rediscuss and and bring it back for a decision at the next sandbox meeting. Duffy. Cool. Thank you, Duffy. Uh, if you could go on the issue and assign it to yourself, that would be great. Okay. Next cartography. Anyone want to start with us? the self-maintaining map of your infrastructure, anyone. Hey guys, hey, hey this is Lee. I, I hey just, Lee. Hey, hey, I was just taking a look at the project and um, cool, cool project. It, it does have um, a significant dependent, well, all right, I shouldn't say significant, but it has required dependency on Neo4j as its database. Um, and the licensing around Neo4j, well, it, it it is uh, not so in alignment with the to spin um, cube, but they just shot so down that will protect and so and so uh i don't know how much of that came through i'm it, there there's anyway there's um i want to open up a question around the uh its dependencies and the licensing of its dependencies uh specifically neo4j mm -hmm. i think it's a good call out Others? I guess uh, as long as they are using Neo4j as an external dependency, it seems okay, um, unless they are making some changes which will cause issues. Yep, uh, I believe, uh, right, I should be more intelligent about this, raise it better. I'll try to go look. Um, I don't know that it was just a copy left thing. It was more like a um, point of usage thing, such that if anyone were to use Neo4j in a production environment, there's, um, I guess I'm speaking out of ignorance, uh, just out of an old memory from a couple of years ago, that I thought that there was um, a purchasing requirement or a, it, 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 they were, yeah. Found it. I pasted it in text. Thank you. Okay. So there is a concern on the impact of the Neo4j dependency on the project being accepted into the ecosystem. Is there any concerns associated with its cloud native fit, its capacity to be a viable project in the ecosystem, or any other concerns or considerations associated with this project? 
I wish Matt was here. He would have loved this one, <laughs> Matt Young, <laughs> to vouch for it. Uh, it. It has some cool applications for sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lyft has done a bunch of nice things here. So from that point of view, uh, you know, there were two or three examples uh, that they pointed out, which were really nice to see. Um, so I, I have a feeling that we should do something like this. But uh, yeah, Neo4j is the question there. Yeah, I don't think that we have very many projects in the ecosystem that actually fulfill this particular set of use cases. I think this is one of the things that we've talked about wanting for a while, but not necessarily very clear on articulating what that want actually is. So I think this would be nice. It's also been around for a long period of time. So I think it's in a healthy position for acceptance to Sandbox and might move quickly to incubation afterwards. Um, so for the licensing portion of it, is this something that we would like to um, engage staff on to help us understand any potential gotchas in, in accepting this project or at least moving it to a vote? Uh, so far, we don't have a requirement uh, that an end user of a CNCR project has to be, I, I don't know, how, do we have it written down that they should be able to use it without using any other license? I think that's probably a reasonable expectation. Aaron? Yeah, I think it's a reasonable expectation, but I don't know that we actually have that documented. I think we assume that dim. So I think it's a great thing to point out that we need to improve in the documentation. I did want to ask separately, because it is a mature project, would we, they be better off actually applying to incubation instead of just going through the paces of sandbox and then incubation? Or do we feel like these things that we're notating are significant enough that it should stay in sandbox for a, a, a limited time? That's a good question. Nothing would stop us from having them move into sandbox once all the licensing questions are resolved and then they can get to a point where they feel they're ready for incubation because we like project has been around for a while it's fairly robust i've not looked at it against the incubation criteria and i'm sure the project would like to be able to do that especially since we recently clarified that um they could move fairly quickly ricardo your hand was up yeah i was just gonna add uh i had a similar feeling when looking at it and maybe maybe one way we could do it is uh just go for a vote now for sandbox, but still request an updated uh, presentation to um, to a tag uh, to also clarify what could be missing for incubation so that we they could consider applying for incubation right after, but we could sort out uh, onboarding things in advance. Okay, so here's, this is what I'm hearing and I wanna just double check this. Um, we would like to have the CNCF take a, stat, take a look at the licensing associated with the project specifically to Neo4j to ensure that there isn't any conflicts that would prevent us from accepting it into the CNCF. Provided that there are no conflicts, this project should be okay to move forward to a vote with a recommendation that they also present to tag security um, or do a refresh presentation to tag security and consider applying to incubation. Did I get that right? Dims, you're off mute. Yeah, yes. uh, sounds good. Okay. Is there uh, a... The only other thing I would add is uh, uh, we, it doesn't need to come to, like we can do async vote on, on it when, when it is ready. Yep. Um, is there a TUC member that would like to assign themselves and put that comment in there so that we can have staff appropriately engaged? It's assigned to Dave, I think, right now. Oh. Someone else can assign. I don't think Dave is here today. Otherwise, I can take it. Yeah. Okay. Ricardo, if you are up for doing that, go for it. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Next up, Radius. Open source cloud native application platform for on-prem and cloud. Anybody take a look at this project? I have. It's quite an interesting project in terms of refocusing uh, kind of the CNCF landscape on 
what it means to have an application and what it means to be a developer in the ecosystem. And I think it has a lot of potential. Um, and I do know it has uh, you know, quite a bit of interest. Um, so as far as like identifying healthy communities and momentum, I think it, it hits the bar on those. Yep. Karina? Mm -hmm. So what, what Aaron said, the only thing I wanted to at least raise is that currently it supports Terraform and um, Bicep. Both are not, well, we know Terraform, but um, Bicep is also an Azure <laughs> project. I don't see anything right now in the roadmap for a um, non-proprietary um, project for creating resources, but I think that's just something that could um, be addressed in their roadmap, but I think it's a very interesting project and we liked it in Tag App Delivery. Kathy? Yeah, uh, I think th this this looks like a very large project. It helps, you know, complicated applications to automatically run, you know, and deploy run and scale. Um, so it can, looks like it will combine multiple projects together, like including Kida, including, you know, uh, Kubernetes and CSI drivers. Um, my question is, uh, because it, it, it helps the uh, you know, like application to deploy run and scale, right? So it has to define all this, um, how this, to define the, I mean, the application, it can use YAML or Helm charts. And also, but there are other specifications too. So I'm just wondering, um, and it also mentioned it can use its, their, its own abstraction layer APIs from a tool or like, yeah, bicep. So I'm just wondering, um, if there are so many different ways of defining an application, um, how should user choose, you know, um, yeah, that's a little bit, that's, that's my concern. But I think it's a very good, it's a good project, it's an interesting project. Maybe the app delivery team, um, PAC can help, help us with that, you know. Yep. Um, so they, so Tag App Delivery's already looked at the project, sounds like, um, they're good with it. Uh, regarding the support for proprietary or um, for proprietary software, Terraform, and the other one for Azure, in the past when projects have come and applied and they only have one cloud service provider that they integrate with, um, we've had them go back and get another one or at least support for two cloud service providers. Um, there should be... We've not... We have not not accepted a project because it only supports multiple proprietary infrastructure, cloud service providers, pick your flavor of, of technology that's proprietary. Um, so I, I think here it's reasonable for us to ask that they provide a roadmap um, for integration with other open source projects in this space. However, I don't know that um, we should withhold their application just because they only do two proprietary ones. Dems? Yeah, I, I'm good putting it to the vote. Uh, and okay. To, yeah, going forward. All right, let's move Radius to a vote. Q plus. It's a Kubernetes operator to deliver applications as a service for multi-instance and multi-tenancy. Uh, yeah, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, I think the main concern, uh, well, one, one of the first concerns that I, uh, I ended up looking at was like, it's a single person uh, repository. Um, so I, we might need, a, they might need a little bit more um, community around it before they come here, I think. Um, okay, Kathy, your hand is up. Oh, sorry, I, I think I need to roll on the hand. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, I agree, Dems. I think that it's one person is is not enough um, anymore for sandbox projects coming in. We we really need a stronger start from a community um, perspective. There's also some interesting um, dialogue here around the difference between the 
enterprise, if I'm understanding it correctly, what the commercial offering is in comparison to Cube Plus. So a better clarity in distinguishing those and how they plan to manage that, I think is going to be important. Um, but given that, and given that it is a single maintainer right now, and it is a Kubernetes operator, um, are we okay moving this project to a vote? Or is this a come back later when you have more people? and more maturity. Yeah, I would go for the second one, Emily. Don't want to one as well. say no, no. Okay. <laughs> with a vote. Okay. Uh, it's more demoralizing then. Uh, okay. Um, is there a TUC member that would like to assign themselves to this to provide that expectation back to the project with an estimated timeline or specific milestones that we would like them to achieve before they can reapply? I can do this, Emily. Thank you, Dems. Cube Plus is going to come back later. Report, Cloud Native Application Orchestrator. Anyone look at this? With recommendations. Looks like we've had a few folks comment on the issue. Similarities between Freeport and Radius. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to bring up is that it is similar to Radius. It's also, we're seeing a lot, a lot more of these show up in tag app delivery. And so that's, that's the creation of the new uh, working group for application development. Um, recommendation from the tag is to move this forward. Well, I, I had a note here about uh, the project seems pretty young, though. Uh, it's like a few months old, unless I'm looking at the wrong place. Um, yeah. It also like they have only one major contributor. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was just pulling up my notes on it again. The um, like you said, it is one major contributor, and uh, it's not as active as Radius, obviously. Um, going from the last project could suggest that they um, go back for community development. Um, but it is it's still a very interesting project. Yeah, I, I had the same note. Like it looks very interesting, but maybe. Uh come back in a couple of months and we give them pointers on how to build a community. Although in this case, it's not just one. It is it looks like there are two people working together, Richard and Randall, and then someone new just showed up and started contributing. So it's not quite the, it's not quite the bus test. So it sounds like we would like the project to be a little bit more mature, have a slightly larger community, but not necessarily significantly larger. Um, we also talked about whether or not they need to have more than one maintainer. And I, Ricardo, I see your comment in chat that would need to be updated if that's the expectation we're going to be setting for projects moving forward and, and future applications. Um, so building a little bit more of, an, of a community around it, bringing in an additional maintainer and a minimum, um, as well as just a little bit more time to attract more interest, more attention to the project, grow it slightly more. Is that correct? Yeah, I would I don't do it. the maintainer one. Because there are three active contributors here. So I don't, I don't think we can okay. get away with that. Yeah. Okay. I, I would add one more thing. Uh, they seem to have some AWS specific stuff. Uh, we should get them to see if they can go beyond one cloud provider. Yes, they should be going beyond one cloud provider. All right. So they should be working beyond one cloud provider. We'd like to see the project a little bit more mature. Um, we'd like to see the community grow slightly more. Um, and then I need a TOC member to assign themselves and provide those recommendations back to the project as milestones for them to return later. Anyone? Okay, I will do this one.
All right, we've got six minutes left. Hydra, monitoring services made easy. Real-time alerts, seamless integration with Prometheus and GitHub Actions. Do we have someone that can talk to this one? Kathy, I saw that you were assigned. Have yeah. you taken a look? Yeah, I have gone through this. Uh, I think it looks like it's very early for the sandbox application. It, its scope is limited and there, there's no roadmap information. Yeah, I would suggest it comes back. And they also suggest it presenting to the tag observability and give the tags feedback. Yeah, I have a few more notes there at the bottom. Um, um, GPL license and uh, one committer and okay. plus one to what Kathy said as well. All right. So sounds like project needs to become more active. Uh, there's a licensing question associated with the project. Um, what other items do we need? No roadmap. <laughs> no roadmap. <laughs> Uh, tag observability. Yeah, tag observability. Yeah. All right, presenting to tag observability, getting the feedback. All right, uh, Kathy, since you're assigned, do you want to provide that comment on the issue? Yes, yes, I can do that. Okay. Awesome. And that brings us to the bottom of our queue for today. Anything outstanding or missing? Good job, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I do want to. Four minutes to raise, spare. Duffy, I do want to raise one thing, which is that in the new section, maybe this is just me not knowing how to do the thing, but like in the new section, we now have a the um, spin cube project, and in the existing projects that are going for Sandbox, there is the Wasm Cloud project, and they seem to. Seems like Wasm Cloud's been in there for quite a while, quite a while, and Spin Cube showed up like three weeks ago, and so I think that's raising some hackles. Uh, so Wasm. Can I just add Wasm Cloud to the list, or? Wasm Cloud is an accepted sandbox project already, so it's applying for incubation. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, Wasm Cloud is is applying for incubation. Spin Cube just applied for sandbox. That makes more sense. Um, okay. Anything else? All right. Cool. Thanks, everyone. I will see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.